Okay, thank you for coming back and listening to our 16th lecture. This is going to be on the subject of Alicia and the two she-bears. Complicated. I'm going to read you chapter 2 in Kings 2. Um, this is when Elijah is about to go up to heaven on a fiery chariot. And Elisha accompanies him and he asks of Elisha, sorry, Elisha asks of Elijah <coughs> um, that he wishes to have twice the spirit of Elijah. And Elijah says to him, if you see me going up, then you know your wish has come true. So let me read you this. Um, 25 verses. Okay, so I'll read you in English. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee. For the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said to him, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I'm going to take away the, the old English, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel, and the sons of the prophets were at Bethel, came forth to Elisha, and said to him, Know you that the Lord will take away your master from your head today? And he said, Yes, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said to him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray you, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord lives, and as <coughs> your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho, and the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha, and said to him, Know you not that Lord will take away the ma your master from your head today? And he answered, Yes, I know. Hold your peace. And Elijah said to him, Tarry, I pray you, here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. And they two went. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went, and stood in view afar off. And they stood by the Jordan, and Elijah took his mantle, and wrapped it together, and smote the waters, and they divided thither, hither and thither, here and there, so that they too went over on dry land, rather like the splitting of the sea when the Israelites came out from Egypt. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you, before I am taken away from you. And Elisha said, Pray you, I pray you, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so to you. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, they behold were that, sorry, <coughs> that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and part of them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more. And he took hold of his clothes, and rent them into pieces. He took up his, also the mantle of Elijah, that fell upon him, that fell from him, and went back, and stood by the bank of the Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah, that fell from him, and smote the waters, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? When he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets which were in view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah does rest upon Elisha. And they came to meet him, and bowed, him, bowed themselves to the ground before him. And they said to him, Behold now, there be with you servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray you, and seek your master, lest peradventure the spirit of the Lord have taken him up, and cast him upon some mountain, or unto, un, unto some valley, into some valley. And he said, you shall not send. Now, I'll just miss this little bit out. Um, they don't find him, obviously. Um, and then the men, this is, this is a bit later, and the men of the city said to Elisha, Behold, I pray you, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord sees. But the water is naught, and the ground causes bereavement. And he said, Bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. <coughs> and they brought it to him. And he went forth into the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, 
and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or bereavement. This is very similar of the, the, the splitting of the sea when the Israelites came out. They came, one of the places they came to fairly soon was, was, was a, like an oasis of bitter water. And God tells uh, Moses to take wood of a certain tree and cast it into the water and it becomes sweet. So this is similar after the splitting of the Jordan. We see some, something similar within Elisha and the story which Moses is involved in. So the waters were healed on that day, on this day, according to the saying of Elijah, which he, which he spoke. And he went up from thence to Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city, and mocked him, and said to him, Go up, you bald head, go up, you bald head. And he turned back and looked on them, and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she-bears out of the wood, and tore forty and two children of them. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel, and from thence to Mount, to, to, he returned to Samaria. So, <coughs> the actual story takes two verses. Um, so, he, he's going, he went up from thence to Bethel, and as he was going up, there came forth little children. That's what it says, little children. In Hebrew, it says, Na'arim katanim. Na'ar is a as a youth, usually translated as a youth, maybe a teenager, a young boy, a lad. Katanim. So we're talking about small, small, small boys, or maybe small children. Yetsu min ha'ir, going out from the city. So this is the city, which one would assume was where he had healed the water. So, and they curse him. The word for curse is vayis kalsu, and they cursed him. The word kalsu can also mean to praise. Uh, Ula kales, we say in our prayer book, we say in, in uh, his praises, so he, to praise to praise him. Vayis um, kalsu, so literally it's a reflexive, so it's like praise themselves. They're, they're making a joke of him. That's how it's translated here, a curse. A joke. And what does he do? He he curses himself. He curses them back. He, 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 they make light of him, mock him. And he turns around and he says, For you aim, and he saw them, by color lame, and he cursed them, B'Shem Hashem, in the name of God. So what do they actually say? They said, Ali Kurach, Ali Kurach, go up, Baldi, go up, Baldi. So I'm going to write those two words down. Put my glasses back on. So the words are, Ali. I'm not putting the vowels on, but that means go up, baldy. Now the word karach is does mean baldy, but it also means other things. It can also mean ice. Karach is ice. Uh, kar means cold. So it's got more than one meaning. Let's look at what it actually equals. The normal value of the word karach is 100, 200, and 8. That's 300 and 8. And we take the word bald. Just going to flip over. Okay, bald has a placement value of 19. That's 2, 1, 12, 12 and 4 is 19. That's PB. It has a normal value of 37. That's 30, 34, 35, 36, 37. That's a normal value. It has a normal inner value of 252. Okay, if I add that together, I will get, that's 9 and 9 is 18, 3, 4, 9, 10, 308. So there is a connection between the word krach and bald. Bit more complicated than the normal. If I have the placement value and the normal value, get the total value. So I write this as T N I V. Um, so if I now I'm going to go back now. So what happens is this they say, go up, krach, go up, krach, go up, baldy, go up, baldy, twice. 
and because they said it twice, to two she bears come out and curse, um, uh, uh, sorry, and kill these forty-two kids. So we'll see if that's true, because really they didn't kill forty-two kids, and Elijah didn't set a curse against these children in that way. It's got much more uh, hidden meaning here. But let's take the word Korach, and we're going to go up twice. We're going to go up twice with Korach. What do we mean by going up? Is that we're going to go up one letter. The letter next in the alphabet of the Kuf is a Resh. Kuf Resh. And the next letter, who's got a Resh here? After the Resh is Shin. Kuf Resh Shin. And then we've got the Chet. The letter after the Chet is the Tet. Reshet. But we've got to go up twice. So we're going to go up from Reish, Kuf Reish, next letter is a Shin. Next letter of the Shin is the Taf. And after the Tet is a Yud, Shtay. And Shtay is twice. Two. If I want to write Shtayim as the word for two, it's Shtayim. And you notice that, well you won't notice this unless you know Hebrew a little bit. So the letter Shin it's written like this, but it could be a sin. There's a shin and there's a sin, depending where the dot is. There's a dot here, and it's a shin. And if it's on the left, it's a sin. So when you're reading Hebrew, you've got to be careful which side the dot is, because the difference of a shir and a sir. So if I put the dot there, so it's no longer shtaim, shtaim, which is two, it's stein. Now if I blend the stir together, I get steam. Steam, 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 there we are. I hope you heard that one. Steam. So in other words, I can write this, I can read this Hebrew word as steam, because the Yud makes it E, so that's steam, steam. So we said that this was ice. And we said, now we show you this is steam. So this must be water. Some connection somewhere to water. So we've got the two levels of going up with uh, from ice, the, the, the three states of, of, of matter, really, uh, solid, liquid, and gas, water, uh, ice, water, and steam. So, if we now, <coughs> um, sorry, I'm just looking around, gets rather involved. Okay, so, Karach, we'll come back to Karach. If I look at the placement value now, where the kuf is the 19th letter, the 20th letter, and the 8th letter, 8th letter, that is 47. And that equals the placement value of beast. So a little bit of connection between the bears. Uh, we have a beast here, Karach. So, uh, oh, just before I move on, the idea of... Um, of water being connected to Elisha is pretty clear. We're just seeing he splits the Jordan. He cures the water in the city so it becomes sweet and drinkable. Later on there's an instant where one of his disciples loses the head of his axe in a stream of water. And it's not his axe, he borrowed it, so he's really upset about it. So Elisha takes some wood and he throws it into the water and this metal axe head rises to the surface. There seems to be some interesting things connected both with actually with Elijah and Elisha with water. And we can see that he is somewhat um, connected here as well. He's a, a master of water. So, let's move on. <coughs> now, the word in Hebrew for two, this is just a byproduct at the moment, two is shtaim or shenai. It's, it's two, there's different words, there's Shnaim and the Shnaim. This is one of the ones, Shnaim. They both equal the placement value of 58. Okay? So the, the, the English and the Hebrew, they're connected to. And they're also connected to um, Shtay. Because Shtay, which we had over here, this letters here, which we said was 2, um, has a large value of 347, 45, that's a large value, and 2 is also equal to 240, 345, 
as a normal inner value. So there's a connection between two, Shnai and Shdei. There's a connection with the idea of the two here. And remember that Elisha asked from the Elijah two times his spirit. Now, the bear. I'm not going to touch too much on the subject of the bear because that's in my book quite a lot. Um, so he curses them about the bear. And the word we said that he curses is very kalalem, and he cursed them. The root of that word is the word kalel. Okay. Kalel is kuf, lamad, lamad. It comes from the word kal. The word kal uh, means light. Okay, light. Here we are. We've got ice, water, and steam. It's getting lighter and lighter and going up. So, kalel is to curse in, in a normal sense, to make light of somebody, to to joke at them back. So, if I was to work out the, so I've lost him. I'm going to work out the normal inner value. So the normal value of kuf becomes um, <coughs> kuf. That's a hundred, and a hundred is hundred and eight. Lamed is thirty. Thirty is a hundred. Lamed is thirty. Thirty is a hundred. I've add those together. I get three hundred and eight. So we've got this reflex back. They called him Kurach. He used kalel back at them. Both three hundred and eight. So there's a connection between kalel and cursing. If we now take beast over here and we work out the normal value, we've worked out the placement value is 47, the normal value is 2 plus 5 plus 1 plus 100 plus 200 which is 308. Again, that's connected to curse connected to Karach. The question is, was he really bald? That's the real question. This is, um, you know, Elijah is called hairy. <laughs> so, was Elisha really, really bald? But I'm not going to discuss that here. So, he, st he, he calls out these two bears, and these two bears apparently um, curse, uh, kill these 42 children. Uh, the way it's expressed here in the text, Hebrew is very specific. It doesn't say 42. It says 40 and 2. If I write 40 and 2, so there's 40 and there's 2. If I put them together, I get 402. So if you look at the English now of Ale, Ale Kruach, Ale Kruach. Go up, Kruach, go up, Kruach. Take that off. So, um, let's clear this a little bit. Ale Kruach. That, that really translates as go up. Ale means go up, Kruach, Baldi. Now, go up has a normal value. That's 7, 60. No, it's not normal, it's a normal inner value. But I can write this down anyway. That's. 300 and that's 70. That's the normal values. If we write underneath that the normal inner values, they are 65, 97, 130, and 70 is 110. If I add that together, I get 12. I get 6 and 9 is 15, 18, 19, 20. And I get 1, 2, 3, 4. I get 402, which is what we have here. So go up, crack is connected to this 40. And two. These are connections I'm making at the moment. If we now, I just wanted to check with this also 400. No, it's not. No. So this is the normal inner value. So now we're going to go back to our phrase, which was uh, Karach, and above that was uh, Reshet, and above that was Stay or Stay. Now, I'm going to work out what the values of these are. The normal values. That's 710. It's 300, 410. This is 200 plus 300 is 509. 
and this is 308, which we had before. And I said to myself, what is the difference between these? So the difference between this level to that level is 201. And the difference of that level to that one is also 201. You're going up basically 100, 101 from there. Each of these are in hundreds, this is in the units, so you're going up 100, 101. It's 201. If you add that together, in other words, the difference between the top and the bottom is 402. Go up. So they went up. They went up 402. And I thought then, hmm, 201. It's 201. So, uh, where should I write it? Write this off at the moment. This 201, 200, 100, and 1. If we work out what that is as a placement value, I get 185. But there's two of them. So there's 185. 201 is 185. Divide it twice because we're going up twice. We get 10, 7, 370. Now you notice that up is 370. So this is also connected to the English word up. Now these two bears, they came out of the woods. And the word wood has a normal inner value of, I'll do this, uh, that's 500, 126, 60 is 97, 97, and that's 4 is 60. If I add that together, I get 7 and 7 is 14, plus 6 is 20. I get 2 plus 9 is 11, 26, I did 2, 20, 26, I did that wrong, did I? No, I didn't, hold on a moment. Uh huh. Maybe this doesn't work out as I thought. No, it's no, sorry. It's 116. 500, W is 500, and the word 500 is 116. So 116, so that doesn't give me carry 10, not 20. Uh, no, no, carry 20, but try again. I've got 9, 10, 19, 15, 16, 17. Oh, that's right. 17, carry 1. Uh, try again, no, 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 what, 19, 19, 20, 25, 26, 27, carry 2, no, not it today, 1 and 2 is 3, yeah. 370, I'll do it again, right, that's 116, 97, 97 for the O's, because they're 16, 60 is 97, uh, D is 4, and 4 is 60, add those together, you will get 370. Don't do this on the board by yourself. You make mistakes like me. So that again is connected to uh, going up. So there is a lot of very strange things going on here. Um, the, the the people that came out of the city were kids, right? And the Hebrew was Naarim, for example. The word Naarim. Block Naarim. And if you work out the normal value for that, you'll get 40, 10, 200, 70, and 50. What does that equal? That gives you 50 plus another 50 is 100, plus 200 is 300, and 70. We get 370. And if you take the, the word na'ar, which is the c singular for a child, this na'ar is children, lads. If you take the singular, which is just na'ar, I'm writing the space, you take na'ar, and you work out the placement value, it's 50, that's 14, 16, and 20. And then you place, work out the normal value, which is 50, 70, and 200, which is 320. So you get 370 again. This always comes up. 370, 370 wood. Up is 370. Uh, 201 uh, is <coughs> connected to 370. So... All the time we're getting this idea of um, of of connect in the connect interrelationships between the things that take place within the story, and I find this every time I look into the Bible and I show connections, I'm showing relationships within the story of these numbers. Uh, what they mean needs a bit more thought, uh, and I will ask you 
to read that up in my book if you're interested further in those things. Um, I discuss what this number 402 is connected uh, to and its importance to the story of God's name because he calls in the name of God um, and so God's name comes into the story as well. Uh, what comes out of the woods is a she-bear or two she-bears. Um, and if we use the placement value for she-bear we get 19, 8, 5 and bear believe it or not equals the same as God and I discussed that as well. The whole thing comes to 58 which we said was the same as um, 2. So she bear is connected to 2. <coughs> now the she bear has um, another value. I didn't actually write down what kind of value it is. Um, it's certainly not the uh, normal value. So it's either the large value or the normal inner value. I think it's the large value. But she bear equals 384. I think it's the large value. It could be the normal inner value. And now if you add those two together, you get to 1314. You get 442. And since there were two bears, if you double that, you will get 442 plus 442 is 884 and 884 is connected to up because if you take all the values up which is the placement value of 37 its normal value is 370 its normal inner value which is 240 and its large value which is 237 um, you get 884 so again we've got this connection between she bear and going up very very strange and if I just one more interesting connection there Krach Krach we said was 47 Krach we said was 47 the placement value and we said it's 308 for its normal value if I now add those I get 355 now because they said it twice you have to double that 355 and 355 is 710, which was Shte, the, the highest of the orders going up, Karach, Reshet, and Shte. So Karach twice equals the second level, which is Shte. All very strange stuff, and all these symbolize something much more deeper than just God coming out, or bears coming out, uh, and destroying the um, these kids. Um, I, I'm sure you've probably heard about the bears picnic. Uh, if you go down to the woods one night you're sure to have a surprise. Um, and the bears are having a picnic and the word picnic and bears have got the same value would you believe. Um, the word bears the word bears uh, I've got no room Bears equals 198, that's the normal value. So you've got 119, you've got 8 there, 5, 1, and 2. You've got a normal value. And if you take picnic, uh, you find that it's got the placement value of 54, and it's got a normal value of 144. That's the normal value, that's 70, that's 50. So 50 and 70 is 120, 29. 132, 135, 144. Add those together, 198. So we can see a connection between picnic and bears. So the bears do enjoy having a picnic, that's for sure. Okay, so um, the story goes on. Um, in my book I show you that the word krach is actually an old Finnish word for bear. And there was a ritual that they did of sacrificing a bear. They would hunt for a bear. They would sacrifice it. And they would then pray to the bear that the bear should come back down again. And the word krach is apparently a word you can find this in Wikipedia. It is a, not really the word for bear, but it was called sort of a, a word used for bear. Like when I talk about God, I would say Hashem, the name. Uh, and I would write different sort of 
words instead of God's name. I might just put the letter Dalid, because the Dalid equals four, and there's four letters of God's name. Uh, because Jewish people are not allowed to pronounce God's name as it's written. And so they don't pronounce the word bear, because um, for them it's a God. And that's interesting, because the word bear uh, has the placement value of 26, which is God. So, um, so I talk about this Finnish ritual about uh, sacrificing the bear, and I also talk about the two bears in the sky, Urus Major and Urus Minor, the two bears, uh, constellations in the sky, um, and how they connect in with this. Um, uh, and I also mention um, about, actually going about Theodore Roosevelt, because Theodore Roosevelt goes... Um, on a bear hunt, and he doesn't actually kill the bear. Um, his uh, people in his particular group, who have caught the bear, uh, tie him to a willow tree, and um, they are, give him the privilege to kill the bear. And he says, "No, it's not sportsmanship for me to kill the bear." He didn't actually capture it, so why should he kill it? So that got on the papers, uh, and there was a cartoon of, a, of him with this cartoon bear. And two people independently, one in Germany, one in America, started to make these teddy bears. And they became teddy bears because Theodore, is Theodore was called TD at school and became Teddy. And so it was named the teddy bear. And these two bears, again the number two, remember Theodore was Theodore Jr. He was a president of, of, of the United States of America. Um, and he was junior because his father was also Theodore Roosevelt. So there was two of those. And there were two bears. So this number two comes in again. And um, so I connect it to the bears in the sky as well. Um, and the interesting thing about the bears, the teddy bear, is that it was the first of all the bears that become child orientated. So you get uh, Rupert Bear, Pooh Bear, uh, Paddington bear, Yogi bear, you get lots and lots of bears that are coming afterwards after teddy bear. And the bear becomes <coughs> something beloved to children, which is the reverse of what one would have thought bears would have been for the last 2,000 years beforehand or more, um, where bears would have been, you know, if you misbehave and you don't behave properly, it won't be the bogeyman that comes to get you, it will be the bears that come and get you, because the bears were scary and the bears already killed 42 children, so don't misbehave. Uh, but now the bear became beloved to the children, and um, uh, and, and throughout, since then, it's uh, been kids' favourite sort of toy. The, I think the first uh, stuffed animal was a teddy bear. So that's all I'm going to say today on the um, story of the uh, bear. It's got a lot more to it than what meets the eye. This concept about water is an intrinsic part of, of it. Um, was it raining? 42 kids that uh, come out. Um, 40, was it 42 or was it uh, 84? Was it double and it split it into half and there were 42? What is 42? If you take the word rain, the word rain equals 42, as does war. Um, that's Iran, by the way, same list as Iran, war. So um, we have <coughs> Japan is also equal to uh, 42, which is war. So we've got this rain connected to, um, to this event as well, because the 42 children. So were the children a metaphor for the rain that come out? And if you've got a bald head, when it rains, it doesn't feel too good. So is there some connection with water? Is this a multi-leveled story for which we can see it at different levels? And it's trying to tell us a message. More in my book. Thank you for listening. And uh, lecture, which one it will be? 17 will be coming up very soon. Thank you very much.